So deep diving in the HTTP server in Bun, plus dockerizing the Bun project and running it with a docker compose file. That's what we're going to see in this video. If you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to have a deep dive in the HTTP server in Bun plus dockerizing the project at the end and actually running that docker image with our custom Bun project in it with a docker compose file. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as we saw in the previous video, we actually tried to interact with Bun itself, creating a basic HTTP server, installing packages and running scripts. So right now we're going to have a deep dive in the HTTP server and how to make complicated HTTP servers in Bun. So if I move to the documentation page over here, we have the bun.serve which starts an HTTP server and has a fetch function over here which accepts a request as the input and returns some response based on our logic. So as it is stated over here, the fetch handler handles the incoming requests. It receives a request object and returns a response or a promise with the response as its generic type. So actually in order to handle the requests for different paths with bun we can use the if statement with the url.path name as its condition and returning relevant things based on our use cases. So if none of the if statements are met we'll actually return a 404 as the response. So in order to configure the hostname and the port that the server will be listening on. We can pass in some additional configurations like port which accepts a number and the hostname which accepts a string. That bun will actually try to bind the HTTP server to these given values. Also we can listen to a Unix socket integrated by default in bun and pass in the socket file with the unix key and again we have the fetch function that handles the requests. So in order to give a test I'll just copy paste this piece of code to my index.ts file that we created in the previous video in a docker container using the bun official image. So if I go to the terminal over here so actually by running docker run dash v to pass the app directory to inside the container in the path slash home bun app and dash p to map the 8080 port in my machine to inside the container with exact same port and using the official bun image with the tag 1.0 and a command that will sleep for 10 hours and will actually keep our container open and running. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I highly recommend first you go watch it and again come back to this video. So by running the docker exec dash it to run it in interactive mode and passing in the container name with the bash at the end, I'll hit enter and actually I get a bash session inside the container with the slash home bun app directory as the default working directory where I've got all the sample files for my bun project. So if I go to the VS code as you can see I've got all the files and codes over here which I'll put to my github repository for which you can find the link down in the description section. So as you can see over here in my index.ts file I've copy paste the sample HTTP server from the official documentations and actually I've mapped its port to 8080 because this is the port that is mapped to outside the container and hostname set to 0.0.0, .0 which is the default value which actually tries to bind the bun server to all the available network interfaces. So I'll save this file, move to the terminal. If I say bun run dev, I'll hit enter. And if I go to the browser, I'll try to refresh. And you can see I am in the home page. And if I go to slash blog, you can see that I am in the blog page. So basically, as we can see, bun is correctly handling the URL paths. So I'll go back to the documentations. Over here, we can see how to return HTML as the response. So I'll just copy paste this code over here and go back to the VS code. I'll try to add another if statement 
and actually return the HTML as the response. So as you can see, by default, we are able to pass in dynamic values as our returned HTML. So I'll try to declare a variable over here. I'll say const content is equal to hello one from Docker. And I'll pass the content as the value to the pre tag over here. So we are able to actually pass some headers like this over here and actually we'll set the content type to text HTML. So the client browser will be sure that this is actually a HTML content. So I'm going to change this block to HTML. I'll hit save and and because I have passed the dash dash watch in the dev script over here, I don't need to restart my HTTP server. And actually, if I go to the browser on the slash HTML path, I'll hit enter. You can see that I get a dynamically rendered HTML from the bun HTTP server. So going back to the documentations over here, you can see how we can enable the TLS on the BAN server level, which is actually not what I personally try to use because I put my application servers behind a web server, like for example, Nginx or Kong API gateway. And I use a TLS termination on the web server level. And actually I serve my applications without TLS enabled. Also, if you want to learn all about the Nginx or Kong API gateway handling TLS and many more features that they provide. I've got a video series for each that you can also find the link down in the description section. So going back to the official documentations, this is actually how we can enable the TLS on BAN HTTP server level. So basically it will be required a key file and a cert file and pass it as the TLS key with these defined values as we can see over here. So as the next point I wanted to show how we can utilize environment variables in our bond code base. So as you can see over here we can both use .env files or pass in the environment variables while running the bun command itself and actually this is also integrated in bun and we do not require to install any additional packages like for example the .env package that we use to install in a basic Node.js application. So basically by putting the .env file, so basically by putting the .env file beside the project files, we'll be able to inject those variables inside the bound process. So the thing that I'm going to do is go back to the VS code over here. I'll try to create a .env file and pass in some variables like for example, I'll say where one equals to one and where two is equal to two and actually any other thing that you might need in your projects. Also, I'll pass the port variable over here and I'll pass 8080 as its value and I'll go back to the index.ts file and remove this port over here. By default, bun will run on 3000 port, but because I have defined the port environment variable in the .env file, it will actually override that default behavior and run it in the 8080 port. So again, if I go back to the terminal, I'll hit control C and try to run bun run dev. You can see that it also loads the .env file and runs it on the port 8080 as expected. So in order to access all the environment variables that are passed to the bun process, I have created a function that will actually parse the environment variables and will return them with the key value pairs. And actually I've added another path over here, which returns the environment variable list by using that function that I defined up above over here. So if I hit save, go to the browser on the slash ends, you can see all the environment variables that are passed to the bun process. So we can see the port over here, var1 and variable2 and many other environment variables that are passed by default to the bun process. So right now I've got a bun project that is creating a HTTP server and handling many paths as we can see over here. So if I want to dockerize this project, I'll actually first try to create a docker file 
in the project root directory so i'll say docker file and by saying the from and i'll pass the bun of shell image so this will be the base image for my bun project image that will create shortly so first i'll try to define the working directory i'll pass it the slash home slash bun slash app as it is the default working directory in the bun image so next i'll try to copy the dot slash package dot json to the working directory so next i'll try to install the required dependencies so i'll say run bun install this will actually look inside the package.json file and install whatever packages that are defined as the project's dependencies. So next I'll try to copy all the files in this directory to the working directory inside the container and lastly I'll pass in the cmd which I'll pass bun run prod which we don't have yet and I'm going to actually create this script in a moment so if i go to the package.json file over here i'll try to add another script over here and i'll just remove the dash dash watch and change this to prod so by saying bun run prod actually it will try to run the index.ts file but without the dash dash watch option so actually with this little docker file over here we can create and build our own image and actually the point that i just copied the package.json file first and installed the packages and then copied all other files inside the project root directory is that actually each line that i add over here in the docker file will actually add a layer in the newly docker image that will be created and actually docker will try to cache each step for the next users so basically if no changes happen in the previous steps docker will actually try to load the layers from its cache and does not again try to actually run these commands that we pass over here so basically if we do not make any changes in the package.json file the next time that we try to recreate the image docker will actually bypass all these commands and use its cache so right now if i go to the terminal i'll hit ls i'll go to the slash app i'll hit ls again you can see that i've got my docker file over here so i'll say docker build dash t i'll provide a name to my newly created image i'll say my bun and i'll pass dot as the context for the docker build command so if i hit enter so actually i get a permission error for the context that i passed because all the files were owned by root user and by using the chown command i actually tried to own all the files in the slash app directory with my current linux user so again if i try to hit the docker build command you can see that it is actually running each step that i passed in the docker file and finally it successfully creates my image with the latest tag because i didn't pass any tag in my command so right now i've got my custom bun image that holds my project and next i'm going to create a docker compose file and try to run that image and see if everything is working correctly i'll try to create a docker compose file and over here i'll pass the version as 3.3 .3. i'll pass in the services I'll say my bun i'll define the image to be my bun again I'll, i won't pass the tag because it by default will use the latest as the tag i'll say ports and i'll map 8080 to 8080 inside the container i'll pass in file as the dot slash app slash dot env because as you can see my dot env file is located inside the app directory and actually i am passing this because of the port environment variable that i defined in the .m file and that's actually it for very basic simple configuration for the docker compose file to run our bun project so if i save and go back to the terminal i'll go back a directory i'll hit ls and see my docker compose file is over here and by saying docker compose up d 
to run it in detached mode it is complaining for the port that is being used by my previous container so if i say docker ps and if i say docker rm f to force the removal and pass in the previous container name i'll hit enter to terminate and remove that container and if i say docker compose up dash d again you can see that it is created and if i say docker compose ps you can see that its state is up and the exact same port is mapped to given port inside the container so right now i'm actually expecting if i go to the browser and go go to the 8080 port hopefully i'll be able to access the bun project that is running inside the container and actually try to make requests to it so if i go over here i'll hit refresh you can see that the bun project inside the container is actually responding to my requests again if i go to the html you can see that it renders given html and if i go to slash i actually get the response for the home page so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one i'll put all my files and configurations that i create in my videos in my github repository for which you can find the link in the description section down below so actually bun is a very cool tool to use and maybe one day replace with the node.js itself and use this in our new projects actually i'll give it a try and see how it goes also i'll be happy to see your experiences as a comment in the comment section so don't forget to watch other videos on my channel where you can learn about other cool technologies and if you have any questions any recommendations again you can ask me in the comment section down below and if you like the content please don't forget to like and subscribe and motivate me to create more free contents like this and with that i hope to see you in the next video